Well, some of the fastest growing economies are in Africa. Economists, however, say even with the growth, the continent accounts for a mere 2% of global trade. This is despite the fact that Africa is endowed with vast natural resources, increasing purchasing power, and a youthful labor force. So what could be done to boost trade and integrate Africa into continent on global supply chains? Now, for some more insight, I'm joined in studio by Sandra Wera. She's Chief Executive Officer of the Common Market for Eastern and Southern Africa Business Council. Ms. Wera, welcome to Africa 54. Thank you. So Africa, every time we talk about Africa, we talk about how rich it is, how much wealth it has. Mm -hmm. But again, it has had all these obstacles. Can you tell us what are some of the biggest challenges that Africa faces in trying to first trade better amongst the nations of Africa, but also get to a global uh, platform? Okay. Um, first and foremost, um, I'd like to just uh, give a bit of information about COMESA itself. Yes. Uh, COMESA has a total population of about 520 million uh, people, who I like to call 520 million consumers. So we have the largest market share of potential business opportunities within Africa. Yeah. Um, in terms of our global trade, in uh, 2016, we had uh, a global trade of about 94 billion uh, US dollars, uh, of which our total uh, exports were at about 71 uh, billion US dollars, and our total imports were about 125 billion US dollars. Um, we have experienced a decline in terms of our trade, especially because of the decline of um, demand for traditional commodities mm -hmm. within the international markets in terms of petroleum, uh, ores, copper and copper ores and, uh, and oils. However, this has encouraged Africa itself to consider diversification into other product lines that are of a higher demand and have yeah. high value, high impact in the international market. So you will see that Africa's narrative is changing to look at aspects of transformation into the agro industry sector, um, boosting capacity in the services sector, and even looking at new technologies that allow uh, more impact within the rural areas and bring mm -hmm. the rural market into the urban community, yeah. such as the mobile payment systems. Yeah. Yeah. However, just to narrow down our focus a bit, when you look at the supply chain uh, systems within Africa, there is an increasing understanding that we cannot operate as silos, as businesses. So the African farmer or trader today cannot work within their own small network and occupy a small domestic market share within their territories. It is increasingly understood that we have to work within clusters and we must have formed consortia that can allow us to meet the volumes and the demands and the quality and standards mm -hmm. of potential buyers within the market. Yeah. Uh, so what is happening today is that governments and private sector are putting together various mechanisms that can allow the small infant industries that have mushroomed over the past 20 years to come together and okay. focus on meeting purchasing requirements of buyers within, now, the re within the region. Yeah, so some of these things, of course, do happen locally. I know there are things like uh, uh, societies, uh, farmers' societies and mm. all that. Mm. But to what extent, for example, in the Comesa region, uh, are these uh, policies being adopted you know, region-wide mm -hmm. so that uh, farmers can actually uh, tap into the combined uh, wealth and uh, the kind of uh, rich resources of these countries and, uh, the, and benefit from the purchasing power of the people? Mm -hmm. So the regional economic integration agenda is specifically focused on setting up trade facilitation instruments that can allow for freer movement of goods mm -hmm. and services across the region. Uh, Comesa has actually set up quite a number of these uh, instruments, such as the regional customs guarantee uh, system. Uh, we're also looking at setting up a Comesa virtual trade facilitation system that allows for easy, easy clearance of goods across the border and reduces aspects of time, cost, and time and cost to, uh, to the consumer and also to the so Does to this the also buyer. include uh, like uh, tariff uh, regimes and all that? Yes. To, to kind of harmonize regionally? Yes. In mm -hmm. fact, what is happening today is that uh, a lot of our regional policies have been uh, taken into consideration nationally and they're being domesticated. Mm -hmm. You see, at the end of the day, we cannot trade if we do not have regional harmonized standard requirements or regional policies that are responding to the interests of a business community at large. So as the Commerce Business Council, in fact, it's one of our key mandates to ensure that we provide an advocacy platform for businesses to respond to the various detrimental 
regulations that come up within the region and to ensure that we're able to influence policy to speak the language of business so that we can trade freely. But to what extent, are the, the in, in a few minutes, uh, people say that there's a lot of kind of a weak policy in terms of approaching uh, some of those um, uh, uh, kind of activities as serious and uh, priority issues of trade mm -hmm. and, and economic development mm -hmm. from governments. I would say that is not the case. Mm -hmm. I must inform you that today the northern, we have a number of trans, trans, uh, transport and transit corridors across mm -hmm. uh, Africa. The northern corridor and the north-south corridor has become more efficient because of the political will of three governments to actually come together to clear up uh, most of the logistical aspects that have been there. Africa had the highest transport costs in the world. About 70% of, of those transport costs were transferred to the cost of a product to the consumer. Today we're seeing goods reaching countries in the space of five days. We're seeing registration of products uh, within, uh, registration of businesses in some of these countries taking place in 24 hours. We're actually seeing more efficiency coming up in the African in arena. a few countries. And then flying across the continent is extremely expensive. It's it cheaper sometimes to fly to Europe uh, from an African country than to go to another country on the continent. But anyway, we'll talk a little bit more, mm -hmm. maybe some other time. Uh, thanks a lot for coming on and sharing pleasure. this with us. Well, uh, that's um, Sandra Uwira, who is the Chief Executive Officer of the Common Market for Eastern and Southern Africa Business Council.